Hi, friends. Today we are going to continue our education on the topic of digestive tract. And in this lecture 15D, we are going to talk how to deal or how to treat by natural means functional liver disorder or liver deficiency. We are, we are going to talk about food supplements and how, you, you, how it will help your symptoms such as nausea, bitter and sour metallic taste, dull up, right upper quadrant pain, fat intolerance or dislike, peristool, and sometimes discolored kind of greenish stool. There are two sorts in naturopathic medicine, how to deal with functional liver disorder. One is to stimulate the liver. The second one is first feed the liver and then stimulate. Obviously I belong to a second group and I experiment with my patients and I you know, confirm my, my thoughts. That's the best uh, approach because if your liver looks like that, sick and tired and has no energy to work, then no matter how much you stimulate it, it's just not going to happen. Now, let's feed the liver. In the preparation for this lecture, I did a little bit look on the um, internet for possible solutions. And um, almost every single website suggests that you do drink coffee to uh, stimulate the liver. I am not a big fan of coffee, okay? Unless it's taken as a coffee enema. The second, second um, uh, product is always um, juice of uh, grape juice, gra grapefruit, grapefruit juice. And um, I'm not a big fan of juices either. So my favorite food is black radish, also called Spanish radish. radish. And it's um, actually, it's not real radish. It belongs to cruciferous vegetables. It's almost like a cabbage. But it has all nutrients and was used by Native Americans to deal with the liver problems. So when you eat it, you... Um, uh, release the nutrients uh, such as isothiocyanides and indulcery carbonyl, which has strong, has, has strong anti-cancer properties. So you can use both tops and bottoms. The size of the uh, radish is about the uh, size of the ten tennis ball. So if you on a special diet, like um, you might, you watch my videos here and you um, eat all cooked fruits and vegetables. So for the first two weeks, you need to cook it. So put it in your soups, put it in your stew, or just bake it. Through the day, you need about half of this radish to eat right before the meal. So you bite it, cooked one, and stew it and stew it and stew it. If you feel that you get better, then after two or three weeks, you move to the next step and you don't cook it, but you grate it on the grater. You need about two teaspoons of grated black radish. Put just a pinch of the salt there and just a couple drops of olive oil. Mix it, eat it before the meal. Make sure that you stew it really well and release this enzymes, miranase, that will release all nutrients out of the black radish. So this is the way to feed your liver. There are a couple other uh, herbs that are very good for liver. One is escarole and arugula, which is rocket. So you again can start cooking them or then you can eat them later in form of the salad. Next step is let's stimulate the liver. Two herbs are used in my practice. One is Taraxicum officialis and Actrum lapa, dandelion and burdock root. You can buy them in form either dry or extract. In my own practice, I used more often extract and have much more experience with extract because when people come in for the treatment, they want effect faster. And with extract, the concentration of herb is there and liquid extract is absorbed much better. But I also, in description below, I put dry herbs so you can make a tea out of that. Uh, the effect will be not as pronounced, it will take a little bit longer and you can drink tea a little bit longer than take a, a liquid extract. So you take 60 drops two times per day. And I want to show you how you do it. So you would need two glasses. One is with a little bit water. So this is your tincture uh, uh, extract of the herb. And it's usually 
comes with the dropper. So you fill the dropper. And then when you put it in the cup with a little bit of water, you count the drops, 60 of one herb and the 60 drop of another. And then what you do, you drink it. Second cup of the water has a little bit more of water because neither of those herbs are very tasty. As one of my patients used to say, your medicine tastes terrible, but it does work. So you need to chase down the unpleasant taste with, um, uh, with the water. Warning, these herbs I cannot be taken by, pe by people who are taking life-saving medications. If people have acute asthma and take medication, people who take medication for seizures or uh, um, take oncological, uh, um, do uh, go through the uh, oncology, uh, oncology treatment. Why? Because those herbs, what they do, one is color gork and the other coloritic. Basically, they will take out of the blood all chemicals, all vitamins and minerals, uh, and increase production of bile and make the bile more liquid. So more cleaning will be done of the blood, more bile will be produced and excreted into the small intestine. And so vitamins, minerals, drugs will also get cleaned out of the, the blood much faster. Finally, second is second supplement is milk to soul. So you also can put milk to soul, 60 drops right into that mixture that you put dandelion and um, Arctrum blend. Warning, you cannot do this, you cannot take the supplements more than one month. Also, you can do it only two or three times per year for one month because as I said, they will clean everything out of the blood, good or bad. And it may create a disbalance in your blood. Now, guys, that I am, I finished with this presentation. I want to tell you a story about those two herbs. And the story goes following. It was it happened several years ago when I was still in practice. And patient was scheduled. She was she was in need, she was sick. I need appointment tomorrow. So she was scheduled for uh, during the lunch break for me. Patients comes in and tells the following story. On her birthday, or right before the birthday, she goes for her annual physical exam. And part of the annual exam is laboratory work. So she gave the blood and next day, family goes off for vacation. A couple of days later, she get a call from her primary care physician tell her that laboratory work is very abnormal. Patient was stunned, but not to the point that she was able to ask the question. So she asked, what kind of abnormality is there? And physician told her that it's a, a blood dyscrasia, which means in, that in the late term is precancer of the blood. Patient asked, uh, what should I do about that? And uh, primary care physician said that for the three months, we are going to do nothing about that. You come back in three months, we repeat the laboratory work, and if it's not better or if it's worse, then you go to oncologist and we have great uh, group of oncologists here in, in our area. So she goes on the internet, look for the oncologist in our area, find the group that I'm a part of and calls and schedule appointment for the next day as soon as possible because she has no time. She has only three months to act. She wants to be proactive. When she's in the office, she, she wants to take all uh, take supplements and herbs to help to deal with the cancer. We created a plan with you what to do. During the appointment, I usually talk to patients trying to figure out where the problem is coming from. Maybe there is something in childhood. Um, maybe there is a genetic predisposition. Maybe patient works with chemicals or take a lot of drugs or Digestive tract is not healthy. So something is not quite right working. So the patient creates a cancer. Nothing is coming up. But it's really on the laboratory work, there is a blood dyscrasia. What strikes me on the laboratory work as unusual is um, the cells, the blood cells are made in the bone marrow and they maturate there. There and there are two lines of the blood cells. One is called lymphocytic line, and other monocytic. 
And usually people don't have cancer, either one or the other. She had dyscrasia, blood dyscrasia in both lines. So I was thinking that's very unusual. And it's, if it's going to be cancer, it's going to be aggressive. And what I saw in, in my office, a very happy, very upbeat patient. So the picture of laboratory work and the person that I see don't, don't fit together. Because the appointment was during the lunchtime, at the end of the lunchtime, front desk person just storms into the office in order to prepare for the next patient and said, oh, excuse me, I forgot that you have a patient. So I said, well, now that you're here, can you give us a tea, please, for both? Patient said, uh, for me, it's just hot water, please. She opened her bag and said, I have a wonderful tea that I, I like to drink. Do you want to try it? And she get the bag of tea out of the bags. I said, well, I don't, I don't care. Sure, why not? Said, it's a wonderful tea. It's uh, slim. It's anti, it's detox tea. The moment she said this word, detox, my eyes get open, my ears perk. They said, give me the steam. I looked at the bag and sure enough, the ingredients of the tea, dandelion and burdock root, cologoc and choleritic. I said to patient, this is the cause of your blood dyscrasia. Patient was stunned. She did not believe me. I explained her that when you take cologog and choleritic, they will take everything out of the blood and they will put into your small intestine and you will excrete it. The bone marrow, in order to, the, to make a cell nice and mature and round cells, it needs all kinds of ingredients. It needs nutrients, it needs vitamins and minerals. And what happened, cologog and choleritic, actrum blend and burdock, uh, artum lapa and dandelion root, they took all these nutrients so your bone marrow cannot make those cells nice and healthy. So as a result, in the bloodstream, we see all kinds of dysfunctional cells. I said, this is it. Scratch our cancer plan. Here is a new plan. Stop the, the tea, number one. The second is you will take several supplements, vitamins, minerals, all in, and other supplements on a liquid form to replenish the nutrients that get excreted through the liver. Patient left. Patient never, come, never came back. Two months later, I get a mail from her. She, say, she was saying that she wasn't able to wait for three months for the laboratory work, but she did all that I told her, discontinued the herbs, the, the, the tea, take this and this and this supplement, laboratory work was fine. This is example, guys, for you to understand herbs do work. Do not play with herbs. Don't, don't assume that they are totally benign. When I saw patients in my practice, I was by their side. I, I scheduled return appointments. I looked for the sign of improvement. I looked for the side effect of the herbs. I did the laboratory work. Here on the internet, you are by yourself, okay? So you need to know exactly what you are treating, what kind of herb supplements, what kind of drugs you are taking, what the side effect. Look for the cause of your disease. Try to understand, if possible, what's the cause, how you're going to deal with it, create a plan. This is the goal that you want to achieve. And ask your primary care physician, if you're taking herb or supplement, know their side effect. If you're taking the, the drug, ask how long I'm going to, to take it. What are possible side effects? And when I'm going to discontinue? And when I'm going to discontinue, what are going to happen to me? Am I going to be healthy again? Or I'm going to back to ground zero with the same problem? Okay, guys, I'm done. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe. Bye-bye for now.